He began running when he was about 12, running so hard and long that he went home looking as if he fell into a lake. His mother asked him why he did it, day after day. He had no logical answer then, but some 25 years later, he's outdistanced every other receiver in NFL history. Jerry Rice was indestructible until the 1997 season opener. Flip back, handoff, first to reverse to Rice. Oh, what a play by Warren Sapp! Sapp makes the tackle with a spectacular read of the reverse to Jerry Rice, but Rice was hurt. He was pulled down by the helmet. I'm not a doctor here, but I think Rice would be okay. Me watching Jerry Rice all these years, I never thought the injury was anything bad because I never saw him get hurt. This must have been the worst NFL Monday in recent San Francisco history. Pro football's premier receiver was severely injured during Rice yesterday. is likely done for the season. He knows as well as the rest of us know that there are not too many more years there for Jerry Rice. And for him to have that kind of an injury in one of those few last years was depressing for every sports fan. Just thinking about the moment that he came back to the sideline, I sat right next to him. And I knew it was something serious when he had tears to, in his eyes. When Jerry Rice shed a tear, that is probably the most emotion that most people in San Francisco or around the country ever saw from this guy. Sidelined for the first time in his career, the 34-year-old Rice refused to be put on the season-ending injured reserve list. Jerry Rice decides that I hold every other record there is. Now I will set one more record. I will be the guy who comes back the fastest from surgery to repair a torn ACL. I just had no doubt in my mind whatsoever that he was not going to come back from this injury. He wakes up every morning at 6 o'clock. He's up. He's gone, you know, for five, six hours a day. He's working out. I have never met a person that's worked harder than Jerry Rice on the football field. I've never met a person in sport who has worked harder than Jerry Rice. There is an obsession with being better than the guy lined up opposite you. There's an obsession with being better than the guy who's brought in every year to compete with you in camp. It's an obsession, it's fanatical. My most vivid images of Jerry Rice are him working out at the Pro Bowl. Uh, here you are after he wins the Super Bowl. Less than a week later, he's out there running wind sprints to play in you know, what is our only exhibition game. I don't think about the numbers. You know, I think about trying to be the best football player to ever put on a uniform. The standard for all wide receivers was set by Green Bay's Don Hudson. 99 career touchdown receptions in just 116 games. The mark stood for 44 years. Before Don Hudson passed away, it was 1988. Uh, I went out and interviewed him. Don Hudson said, there's a young man in San Francisco who I think will have all the records. This is Don Hudson looking at a guy who's been in the league four years. He knew. The great ones know greatness. Number 1,000 for San Francisco's Jerry Rice as he reaches another spectacular milestone. Rice clearly fulfilled Hudson's prediction, establishing NFL records in career yards, catches, and touchdowns. He got there by honing his talents to an almost inhuman edge. When you watch Jerry on film, Every time he runs a route, it's identical. It doesn't matter if he's running a hitch, a slant, an out, a hook, a post, a flag, a takeoff. It all looks the same. This guy is just, he's immaculate. Rice's passion for order reaches well beyond football. I was struck one day, I went by his car in the parking lot of the 49ers complex, and it was absolutely meticulous. I mean, beyond meticulous. He's spotless, inside and out. So I approached him on that angle, and, uh, he told me about it, that he, that he wants perfection in his life. It's a given that everything in the house has to be clean, or he's around vacuuming, or he's dusting. He likes to see the lines in the carpet just, just perfect. His pants have to be perfect, his socks, his jersey, the pads. I mean, everything has to be for his hair, the helmet. And I've never seen a guy who was like that. The sneakers have to be perfect. His t-shirt has to be tucked in just right. I remember he talked about changing diapers and wanting them just a certain way. When he drops a pass, he's in a funk for a week. Other guys drop the pass, walk back to the huddle. Jerry Rice 
explodes over it. Off his fingertips at the five-yard line and incomplete. Jerry Rice wakes up every morning afraid he's going to lose his job. Literally. One of the most talented guys I've ever played is afraid he's going to lose his job. That Jerry Rice performed at peak level for 14 years strengthens his argument as the greatest NFL player of all time. But the view is that he's a great player only. Jerry Rice would be good for a video game. Jerry Rice is technically a great football player, but he seemed to be all about football. Nobody's really managed to make him human. Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes is presented by Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Also brought to you by Nike. By 1010-220. Dial it and talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. And by Lincoln Financial Group. Lincoln Financial Group. Clear solutions in a complex world. All right. The Delta of Mississippi is the funkiest place in America. It's cotton blowing all around. And uh, you turn on the radio and you don't get sort of standard disc jockeys. You get... Preachers selling automobiles. There was a huge class of underpaid black people down there in Mississippi who didn't have any way to get out of Mississippi except to be musicians or ball players. Clearly in Mississippi throughout the 60s, you had black and white drinking fountains. You had segregation on bus lines in some cases. Only recently in the late 90s have we learned about the white citizen councils and the efforts by the government in Mississippi literally to spy on people to make sure that there were no advances being made in the civil rights movement. I mean, this was an oppressive, oppressive place. There was a time that I went into a bank and I needed to get a loan and I just got completely turned down. You know, I felt like I was qualified. My parents, they told me I would face racism, but, you know, I, I never thought it would just stare me straight in my face and there was nothing I could do about it. Just knowing that the mark is there against you and it's always in the back of your mind, like, you know, am I really good enough? You're at the bottom of the barrel to start with. When you make improvement or make steps toward the goals, even you made some achievements, it still sometimes seems like you are... Uh, you're still at the bottom. Jerry Rice has a profound sense of the racism in Mississippi. Some people take those conditions uh, and rather than putting them in their trunk where they become burdens, they put them in their fuel tank and they become a source of motivation to transcend those kinds of circumstances. He was born in 1962, one of eight children to Joe and Eddie Rice. We had to pass clothes down the line and you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, when you get a new pair of jeans or something like that, you, you would cherish them. You came from a southern big family where you have responsibilities put in your lap early in the game. You didn't get no allowance. He's not afraid of no work because he's been raised that way. He was a bricklayer's son, a man who caught the bricks that his father would throw up from below. And that's how he got those hands. My relationship with my dad, it instilled in me the thing about hard work. He would toss bricks to me and I would just snatch them out of the air one by one. I knew I didn't want to spend the rest of my life there. I wanted to pave a way for everybody and that meant that I had to go to college. A high school standout, Rice was overlooked by big school scouts. He settled for Division I AA Mississippi Valley State in a place called Itabina. We didn't have no grass on the field. When it rained, man, we knee deep in, in mud, you know what I mean? We practiced in the parking lots and put signs up so nobody would park in the big parking lot. His freshman year, he caught 33 passes. And, I, you know, he would catch them when the chips were down. So I started calling patterns for him. Fly pattern, Jerry Rice, touchdown! In four years, he set 18 Division I AA records, catching 42 touchdowns and 214 passes in his junior and senior seasons alone. Well, I was in my hotel room the night before a game in Houston. Turn on the television. They said, here is the, the phenomenon from Mississippi Valley State, Jerry Rice. 
We watched film of him. I, I remember watching every time they threw the ball to Jerry Rice, it was a touchdown. I used to sit on the set of the ABC College Football wrap-up in the years when Willie Totten and Jerry Rice were rolling up all those big numbers. The numbers were interesting, and there was also this fascinating question. You know, they're doing it at Mississippi Valley State. Does it really mean anything? Apparently not. Division 1A receivers Al Toon and Eddie Brown were selected before the 49ers traded up to get Rice with the 16th pick. Why did Jerry Rice fall in the draft? Because he's from a small school, from a small black school in the South. That's why he fell. If Jerry Rice had played at Notre Dame, he'd have been the number one player taken in the draft. When he got on that plane to come to San Francisco, I mean, he was a nervous wreck. He was wondering whether or not he belonged there. And somewhere crossing over uh, the Rockies, he just decided that he was going to get there and he was going to be good. Free from Mississippi after 22 years, Rice was determined never to fall back. While we were dating, I would ask him, you know, let's go visit your, your, your parents' house. Let's go visit, you know, where you're from. He wasn't too, too enthusiastic on taking me there. And so I've only gone to Crawford once, and I didn't get to see very much of it at the time. I don't think that he had this burning desire to show his children where he came from, but he's a very proud man, and he would never admit that publicly. He has not come back and done a lot, said a lot for the university. We are not disgusted by it, but we just think that somewhere down the line, we should see more of Jerry Rice. It's almost as if he tries so hard to compensate for his humble beginnings, to bring him up to a, to a regal status. So he pushes himself every day to just go a little notch higher. So it'll never be said that he's gonna tumble back down here again. out of Mississippi Valley State and you saw those tapes of him going wild and he came in a training camp and yeah he caught a couple long passes but he was dropping passes he would call me all the time and say you know can you please hurry up and come out here I can't take it it's really hard for me one game he dropped four passes against the Los Angeles Rams and the crowd booed the first one booed the second one by the fourth one they were just 70,000 people booing a player. You start getting this in your head that, well, maybe you're not meant to play professional football. I got very down on myself. I cried at times. What Rice deemed failure was a dream season for lesser lights. Named NFC Rookie of the Year, averaging 19 yards a catch, he was nonetheless haunted by his mistakes and launched himself on a fitness program from hell. Most of it was what you would consider military training. Run three quarters of a mile, then run 10, 15 yards, then do some chin-ups, uh, then get down and do some grass drills as quickly as you could, then run an all-out sprint. None of it had anything to do with catching a football. I thought it was the toughest thing I'd ever seen an athlete push himself through. He does things that a human being shouldn't really do. Jerry has been such a disciple of that type of training uh, that he has people, rookies, uh, veterans that, that come out here and spend the summer with them. So we went to this hill, and this hill is probably four miles, and it just keeps going up, 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 and it's like a trail. I remember saying, if I could just stay with Jerry. Next thing I know, he just goes, okay, go. He just takes off. Now, all of a sudden, I'm breaking down. I can't even run anymore. I'm trying to stay with it. I get up there. He looks like he never ran. He's like, okay, come on, Ricky, come on, come on, baby, come on. You know, he's hyping me up and everything, and I finally get across the line. I mean, I'm uh, like this, and he, he, he hugs me, and good job, you know, okay? You ready? Because we got to run back down. I'm like, what? For Rice, there was substantial gain from all the pain. In 1986, he was selected to the first of 11 straight Pro Bowls. In 87, he became the first wide receiver to win the scoring title in 36 years. Then, the 49ers closed out the 80s with back-to-back -back Super Bowl victories. Here's Montana at the top of this game. Here comes Rice. In my opinion, it's Rice as much as Montana that took that offense to another level. I'm watching film with Paul Hackett. He goes, I, I want to know about this play. It looks like 22 z in, but why is Jerry running a post instead of a, a hook? And I said, well, uh, 
you know, sometimes he, if it was open, he would just start, he'd run the pattern and just put his hand up. With Montana injured in 1991, Rice quickly adjusted to quarterback Steve Young's scrambling ways. The duo has combined for more touchdowns than any combination in NFL history. Jerry Rice is substantially motivated by the belief that that perfect game is still out there. In the same sense that John Coltrane was driven by the faith that that perfect note, that perfect sound was out there. It is all consuming and I think it'll be very, very difficult for him when one day he will have to face life without football. Football withdrew into the shadows in May of 1996, when Jackie Rice started to hemorrhage shortly after giving birth to their third child. All of a sudden, there's some bleeding, and just like that, they're wheeling her in for emergency surgery, and Jerry and his mother-in-law are being told, you know, she might not make it through the night. I woke up three and a half weeks later on a respirator fighting for my life. I think I even died, and they had to bring me back to life. I can actually say I am sitting here today because of him. During the time I was in ICU, he was there all the time. He constantly stroked me all the time. I think that he just basically said, time out. I've done it all on the football field, but if I lose her, I've lost it all. I don't think I really knew what life was all about. Life is short. And for so many years, football was like number one. And now it's not. When we return, can Jerry Rice deal with a supporting role? Rice responds to charges of selfishness. Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes is presented by Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Also brought to you by Budweiser. Now is the perfect time to enjoy a brewery fresh, beechwood aged Budweiser. By Burger King, where you can have the delicious king of fries. Burger King, when you have it your way, it just tastes better. And by MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. It's prime time in San Francisco, and this city is ready for Monday Night Football. Making his return to the lineup tonight at wide receiver, number 80, Jerry Rice. In 1997, just 15 weeks after ACL surgery, Rice returned to action the night the 49ers retired Joe Montana's number. On his third catch, he scored a touchdown becoming the first non-kicker to reach 1,000 points. Young throws, is caught by Jerry! He did make a touchdown catch, but Rice paid an expensive price when he landed hard on that very knee, and now he is done for the season. People keep asking, did he come back too soon? Is that why he broke his kneecap? And, you know, the answer is, they let him rehab at his own pace. He was ready to play. But I will always believe part of the reason he came back was it was that night. And it was going to be a big night. There's no question about it. And if it was going to be a big night for Joe Montana, it should be a big night for Jerry Rice, too. The roots of Rice's need to be recognized can be traced back to Super Bowl 23. Although Rice was selected MVP, it was Joe Montana who was chosen for Disney's national ad campaign. Going to Disney World! You have to be selfish in a way. I'm not saying that I wanted just endorsements to come my way. I just wanted the recognition. And, you know, that's something I have fought for my entire career. The perception of selfishness created a backlash on Madison Avenue that dogged Rice well into the 90s. People like Jerry Rice, you would think, would appeal to a tremendous segment of the American public, but they, they don't seem to get the commercial endorsements that others do. Jerry Rice could have been the model athlete of our era, but he was never close to Michael Jordan because of his perceived selfishness. He would complain about not getting publicity. He wasn't great with the media. He'd want to do endorsements, but they wouldn't make himself loved by the public through interviews and other things. So by the time he wanted to sell something, the public didn't know him and didn't want to buy anything from him. 
I think Jerry Rice is enormously marketable. I think Jerry Rice has chosen himself not to engage in the activities that make a person marketable. How much more credit do you need? This sad sack, woe is me uh, routine that Jerry Rice does to me is demeaning for as great an athlete and a competitor as he is on the field. When Rice returned for the 98 season opener, his number one status on the receiving crew was immediately challenged by younger talent. He frequently complained he was not getting enough passes and suggested he might retire if things didn't change. I think there's no question that this was the year that about 50% of the luster of team player really went off Jerry Rice. I think he was selfish. And I think anybody who would argue that is being blind. Despite leading the team in receptions and yards, Rice wasn't the go-to guy in the critical closing seconds of the 1999 NFC Divisional playoff game against the Packers. Throws to the end zone. Oh, 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 the minute that Young throws the pass, and the first thought in my mind is, I said, wow, Jerry Rice didn't catch that ball. You know, they threw it to Terrell Owens when their whole season and maybe the era is on the line. Now here's the other side of it. I'm not what I was. I can't run away from people like I could. I'm a little bit leery about taking a hit. You need to re-evaluate you as a football player, you as a father, you as a brother, and you have given all that you can give. I would rather not see him play anymore. You know what Jerry Rice is if you put him in the real world? He is that 63-year-old CEO of a Fortune 500 company where everybody's thinking we're going to throw him one big retirement party and in the back of this guy's mind he's going to work this company till the day he dies. Right now you know they think okay it's time for Jerry to disappear. It's over. Maybe they want me to disappear but I'm not going anywhere. I don't think I have accomplished that goal right now of being the best football player to ever put on a uniform but if I can still go out there and do what I've been doing over the years. Eventually, people are going to have to say that. As Rice streaks into the twilight, he carries his history on his shoulders. Inspired by David Robinson's decision to play a lesser role in order to win a championship, Rice vows to do the same with the 49ers. But can he truly accept less than the starring role? Will he finish the race with grace or mar our memory of his skills by fighting the inevitable march of time? We will see you next week when the 50 greatest athletes of the 20th century continues its countdown with number 26. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network. Go.com.